Hello, this is Trevor. Today we're going to work on a SQL injection vulnerability in Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. It is visible error based SQL injection. So there's a tracking cookie form SQL querying value of the submitted cookie. Results query not returned. Contains different database user. So we know the other table columns. And we need to get the password for the administrator and then log in. Sweet. Let's check it out. Um, if this has been quite a while since I've done this, so I apologize if I do anything wrong. Definitely let me know how I'm doing. I would appreciate that. But yeah, I haven't touched any of these since I, you know, passed the test and got that cert. So. So I may be a bit rusty. All right. Um, let's see if we have an account. Explainer. Peter. No. Okay. Um, let's refresh this. And then go here to proxy. Let's view history. And we'll see what we got here. So there's the first request. Um, and you can see we get issued the tracking ID. Let's go to this one where we send it. Let's send that to repeater. And let's try checking this out. So let's send it so we have the baseline. 200, no errors. Let's try a single quote. 500. Ooh, and we do get the whole query. So SQL select asterisk from tracking where ID equals that. Very interesting. Okay. Um, let's put in, well, we confirmed SQL injection by that. So we don't need to do the double single quotes and get the 200. But okay. So um, based on that response, SQL select asterisk from tracking ID, from tracking where ID equals, and this is where our injection happens. And it's printing out SQL errors. So what would happen if we do, well, let's do this. First, let's try yeah, let's try concatenation. So concatenation is either the double bars for, I'm going to forget, Postgres and MySQL or the space for, um, for MySQL. So I think I said double bars for post, uh, for the double bar. <laughs> Confusing myself. Space would be uh, MySQL, we get a 500 there, and let's see if we did the double bars. That confirms that we're looking at Postgres, most likely. It could be MS SQL, but, uh, and possibly even, let's check this out. Instead of me just guessing, let's look at it up. Double bars are Oracle. We know it's not Oracle because the format of the query. Is that right? Yeah, maybe. Uh, we can do, we can check against Oracle because remember Oracle has that dumb database, the, uh, forget what it's called. If we do like select a So this should work in, this won't work in Oracle, Oracle. It works. So we've got not Oracle. We decided it's not MySQL, which is the space. So it's Postgres. Okay. Probably wasn't important to figure out, 
But now let's see, what if we, we don't need that extra space. What if we did something like cast to there? What I want at or near concatenate. Do I want concatenate? Yeah. Select cast. Why syntax error at hmm. I should need the double quotes. Yeah, I need that interior cos. Oh, what if I do this cast as int? We can do int. Ah, see this? This is what I wanted to see. Um, we can do other primitives here. But this is what I wanted. So what this is saying is that it's trying to follow what I'm doing um, by starts with this and it selects the letter A. And then it's trying to cast that letter A as an integer and it's failing. And so we get this output here. Why that's important is because we see the results of this statement in the output, right? So what if I did something that actually selects something? So let's try select username from admins. Let's see, wait, before I do this, from administrate, uh, from users, where user name equals Administrator. All right, let's send this. Select username. We get a 500. Ooh, syntax error at end of input. Select username from users where username equals as int. That looks good to me. I wonder if this is an issue with like length. See, that worked as expected. Let's do, how can I tell if it's a length issue? This is, well, I could do select username. What if I change this? How do I shorten that to limit one? Hey, look at that. We got the username. And to solve it, we can just do password there. I did limit one, uh, betting that the first user was administrator. And getting the username, we confirmed that the first result returned is administrator. Um, and this should get us the password. It does. I, probably. Let's check it out. And I'm not going to build a script for this. Uh, I did all the other ones, but I mean, the hard part here was doing the other stuff. So boom, there we go. Very cool. So basically we took the fact that it's showing us the error and then we use that to create an error and we created an error with the cast as int. Um, and we could do, let's see, what other primitives? See, uh, post SQL primitives. Data types. That should be right. Um, okay. So we could do like any of these, like bool. Let's try that. As bool and we should get 
the exact same answer. Very cool. So we use that cast as to cause the error and print out um, what we wanted. Because, and then we concatenated that with this uh, to make it work. We added two comments to, you know, ignore everything after this line. And that told the program print out the answer. Uh, very cool. Um, and there's no solution. So awesome. We did it. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Okay, so I did end up writing a script for this. Super simple, straightforward. I set the tracking ID cookie to our exploit. I send that and then extract the response right after the Boolean. And then I log in with the administrator and that what was returned. Check if it's solved and... There we go. Lab is solved. Sweet. Thanks.